Raider Nation, if you're looking for more free agency videos around the silver and black, hit that big red button underneath this video that says subscribe because since the free agency is about a month away, we're going to be really, really ramping up our coverage around it. What's up, y'all? Mitchell Renz here. You're watching the Raiders Report. And coming up on today's show, the top 25 free agents on the defensive side of the football. I get it. I talked about Derek Carr. Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, we seem to talk about the offensive side of the football quite a bit because a lot of times top trending stories are around, guess what, the quarterback position. But if you're a diehard fan, honestly, if you've just watched this team in the last few years, you know that defense is a major issue. So what I figured I would do here is this. Let's put all the offensive talk in the back burner, and we're going to put the concentration on defense. So I have the top 25 players set to hit the free agent market, ranked from who the Raiders should have the most interest in. And it's not just based on how good the player is. It also goes on how much of a team need it is for this silver and black team. Let's go to number 25 here on my list, offensive tackle, Sheldon Rankins. The Raiders have a big need on the interior, and Rankins coming off a season where he had 43 tackles, three sacks, four tackles for loss. If you are looking to stay away and spending big on the DT room because you do have so many holes to fill on the defensive side of the football, Sheldon Rankins is an interesting name. Next guy here is safety, Julian Love. I know the Raiders are going to be looking for a Deron Harmon replacement, and Love had a hell of a season this past year in New York. Obviously, that was not in Patrick Graham's defense, but he does have some experience playing in Graham's defense. I do think that's a little bit more expensive. A cheaper route could be a guy like Jabril Peppers. Let's go to the next name here. I'm just going to go Ogbo is how I'm going to say it. Akaronkwu, he really finished the season strong. And sometimes when I look at certain players, I'm like, okay, if they started to play well at the end of the season, maybe there's a reason for that. Five sacks, 11 quarterback hits, nine tackles for loss. He's long, he's lanky, and the Raiders do need help getting after the quarterback. Coming in here at number 22, it's cornerback Byron Murphy Jr. I view him as strictly a slot corner, and if you put him at slot, then that usually means that Nate Hobbs isn't going to be able to play there. I'm hoping that the Raiders put Hobbs back in the slot because he was really good, but Byron Murphy is a name to at least keep in mind. Let's now go to the safety position. It's Von Bell. Von Bell, unfortunately for him, is in a year where there's just a lot of very talented safeties. Let's not get it twisted. Bell is a good all-around safety, which would help with this defense. 77 tackles, 4 INTs, 8 pass breakups. And because there are so many other legit safeties in this class that might bump down Bell's price tag at least just a little bit. So we know defense is an issue. What's the biggest issue? Is it defensive tackle? Is it defensive end, linebacker, safety, cornerback? Let me know down in the comments section because I'm going to make this the pinned comment. So you're about to get hit with the YouTube ad break. Scroll on down and let me know what the Raiders' biggest problem is on the defensive side of the football. All right, number 20 here, I'm going to go Jermaine Pratt. And Pratt had a lot of people ripping on him after their loss to Kansas City because of him being upset about the Joseph a high hit. I mean, you listen to a lot of people talk about Pratt. He's a good teammate. 98 tackles, a sack, six tackles for loss. He would be a good fit in trying to help replace Denzel Perriman. At number 19, big name here, it's Jadeveon Clowney. I get it. Clowney's probably never going to get double-digit sacks. But Clowney is still a good edge rusher. And it kind of reminds me when Max Crosby most recently was talking about Chandler Jones and people want sacks when it comes to edge rushers. Jadeveon does help you out in the run game. Is there injury concerns? Yes, there, there's no doubt about it. But Clowney is still a good player in the NFL. At number 18, hey, it's Rock Yassin. I love Rock, and I hope that the Raiders figure out a way to bring him back. The money needs to work. The biggest concern with Rock is the injuries. They are static, starting to add up. He has missed 15 games over the past three seasons. When he's on the field, though, He's a good player, and he really shut down opposing wide receivers, especially when he was targeted last season. At number 17, it's Jonathan Jones. This is another player who does have some ties with this Raiders coaching staff, considering the fact that, well, they, a lot of those guys coached him at his time in New England. There are some legit corners out there that are going to get some money. I'm not going to break the bank on Jones. He is a younger player. He's tough. He's got that tenacity, a nice amount of tackles. 
four INTs and 11 PBUs last season with New England. At 16, another edge rusher, Marcus Davenport. There are more people that are a little bit higher on Davenport than me personally. Is he a good athlete? Yes, but the production really has not been there. He is the top edge rusher on the market for that reason. He's probably going to get paid. I'll be real with you, though. I, I, I wouldn't pay him probably half of what an NFL team will end up paying the six foot six, two 265-pound edge rusher. Today's show, y'all, is sponsored by Fume. And if you haven't already, go to tryfume.com slash chat sports. The Raiders Report is sponsored by Fume. Be smart, don't start. Kick the habit and put it out before it puts you out. Fume is a natural diffusive device that uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habit for a positive one. Fume is not a vape. It is a non-electronic device designed to transform your negative habits. Instead of pods filled with potentially harmful chemicals like a vape, Fume uses cores infused with plants like peppermint and cinnamon for delicious natural flavors. Fume's new version 2 model is snappy and tactile. With an adjustable airflow dial and a magnetic end cap, your fingers will always have something to do. It's Fume's goal to make switching easy and even enjoyable. They have thousands of five-star reviews from people just like you who have successfully switched when other solutions just didn't work. Head to tryfume.com slash chatsports and use code chatsports to save 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. The Journey Pack comes with three unique flavors and the new version 2 Fume to help kickstart your positive habits. That's tryfum dot com slash chat sports and use code chat sports to save an additional 10 percent off that's also going to be available for you guys down in the comments and in the description of today's video let's go to number 15 here on my list it's tj edwards i like tj edwards a lot he's one of my top two linebackers in this year's group 159 tackles this past season for the philadelphia eagles two sacks 10 tackles for loss i like the fact that he can fly all around the field and for me personally if the raiders are going to invest heavily on the linebacker position it's between tj edwards and then the guy i have at number 14 who's tremaine edmonds tremaine edmonds is a great athlete and i really think when the raiders drafted tanner muse remember him they were hoping that tanner muse could be tremaine edmonds <laughs> the issue is he's not even close to the same player edmonds played a little bit of safety and because of that versatility he has the ability to drop back into coverage. He can play sideline to sideline. Over 102 tackles, a sack, six tackles for loss last season with the Buffalo Bills. I like the idea of trying to go out and get somebody like an Edmonds, like a TJ Edwards, whoever you're trying to mix and match with. If you do want to go the cheaper route, Kaiser White is a linebacker that I also like from Philadelphia. At number 13, another Eagles player, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Versatility 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 it's a word that we've heard for a long time and philadelphia has got to be ecstatic for being able to get him in a trade that they did six picks eight pbu 67 tackles to me Con chauncey gardner johnson is today's nickel roby coleman who he can fly all over the football field you can put him in the nickel you can still drop him back and if the raiders want to go with a versatile guy in their defensive backfield I think Chauncey's a, a good fit. At number 12, defensive tackle Zach Allen. A lot of people might not know who Zach Allen is because he's, oh, he's out there in Arizona. He's a good DT. 47 tackles, 10 tackles for loss, 5.5 sacks last season. He is a little bit undersized in terms of what you usually get in a defensive tackle. But because there's so many big names at the top of my list, Allen could be one of those cheaper options to look at because, let's face it, the Raiders need a lot of help on that D-line. At number 11 here, it's Cameron Sutton. You're looking for good cornerback play. There are some good corners out there. There's also some good corners in the draft, so if you don't want to spend big, I get it. The other thing that does make me a little bit hesitant about Sutton is Pittsburgh's defense, especially their front, was legit. Same thing with like Jonathan Jones. When you don't have to cover guys for as long, it makes you look better. Sutton, though, does fit and would be a good replacement for Rocky Sin. Hell, I did rank him higher after all. Before we get into our top 10 free agents that I want the Raiders to target on the defensive side of the football, smash that like button. I can't wait for free agency. Free agency is probably one of the most fun months, times to even do this show because you just never know what happens. And when the breaking news hits, it's like it honestly reminds me of 
pulling the lever on a triple seven machine in Las Vegas and seeing seven, seven, seven come up. It makes me ready to rock and roll. Let's go to number 10 here. Dramont Jones, the defensive tackle from the Denver Broncos. You're going to notice a lot of DTs. Why? Because I think the Raiders, that's their biggest need. He is coming off a strong year. I like his lower half. He does a really good job of being able to get low and not like, like the song, Get Low, but I mean, like, actually get low, win in the trenches, and it's uh, his numbers, I really do think, indicate that. Let's go to the safety position here. It's Jordan Poyer. There's going to be a lot of people that have Jordan a lot higher than I do. I think he's a good safety, but defensive tackle, bigger need. Cornerback, bigger need. Poyer does give you a lot of versatility, especially in your back end, and if you were able to pair him with Trevon Merrig, I, I think that you would like where your defensive backfield is looking at. Six foot, 190 pounds, 63 tackles, four INTs, eight pass breakups last year. Let's go to number eight here on my list, David Long, the linebacker from Tennessee. If you see David Long out there, there are two David Longs in the NFL, so please keep an eye out for that. 86 tackles last season for the Tennessee Titans. Seven tackles for loss, five PBUs. I know that the Raiders scout Tennessee players very often because of their connection with Mike Vrabel. I also know it was one of the reasons why they try to bring in Jayon Brown. Jayon Brown was a disaster. David Long and Brown, not close to the same player. Long, though, is a better version of Denzel Perriman. Let's go to number seven here, Levanta David. If you want the best middle linebacker in this class, I'll call it, it's David. He's going to cost the most. He's 33 years old. I do think that he's a really, really good player. Numbers, 124 tackles, three sacks, 10 tackles for a loss. He's one of the best linebackers in the NFL. To me, though, if I was like, hey, Mitch, how, how would you rather spend 14 mil? Would you rather spend 14 mil on Levanta David, or would you rather spend it on the guy who I got coming up here at number three? Let's go to the eye, though. At number six, it's James Bradbury, and... Bradbury, I know, fits in Patrick Graham's system. Bradbury is one of the top players that I talked about last offseason because I knew that he could still play at a high level. There's a reason you're seeing a lot of Eagles players on this list. They're in the Super Bowl for a reason. They got a lot of players. Bradbury, 44 tackles, 3 INT, 17 pass breakups. He would be the number one corner on this team in terms of an outside corner. That would then help Nate Hobbs go back inside where he was clearly better as a rookie. Now, before we get into our top five, always remember you can hit me up on Twitter and IG to stay up to date on news locals. I put out a video earlier on Wednesday about everything that I knew around the Derek Carr situation with New Orleans Saints. If you're curious, become a supporter and go check it out. At number five, Jesse Bates, the safety from Cincinnati. His teammate, as you already saw earlier on the show, Von Bell. Jesse Bates is one of the best safeties in the National Football League. And before the Raiders drafted Trevon Merrick, I was hoping that they would try to get Bates because they've needed a lot of help on the back end for quite some time. Just like I said with some of these other players, Bates is going to be a very high-profile dude. He's going to get paid. He was franchise tagged last season. I like him a lot. But if you get him, that might not, you might not be able to go break the bank at DT. At number four, it's Jamel Dean. If you guys haven't watched Jamel Dean's tape, turn it on. He is a mean dude out of Auburn. He's not afraid to tackle. He's aggressive. He is the best corner in the free agent market. I would spend 15, 16 mil on him. He might go for a little bit more. He probably will go for more. There's going to be a team out there that's not afraid to throw some dollars around him because in today's NFL, you need a good secondary and you need to be able to shut down one side of the field. At number three, it's Dalvin Tomlinson. This is the dude I was referring to in terms of how would you rather allocate your money? I would rather allocate my money to go out and get a guy like Tomlinson who I have him projected somewhere around $12 million per year. And the reason is because the two guys ahead of him are just two better defensive tackles. So Tomlinson, he's a good run stopper. He's a good guy getting after the quarterback. He's really, really big body, can take on double teams, which would really free up dudes like Max Crosby and Chandler Jones. Coming in here at number two. If you can't afford number two, then that's maybe where you go the route here with Tomlinson. At 25 years old, Deron Payne's the top defensive tackle if you want to go young. I actually think Payne gets more money than the guy at number one because of the age. 
Both players are phenomenal. 64 tackles, 18 tackles for loss, 11 and a half sacks last season for the Commanders. And I have Payne at number two because I think he gets more money than the guy at number one, Javon Hargrave. And the reason why he's number one is because I did this list based on how I think McDaniels and Ziegler are going to operate this year. They're going to be in win now mode. I would say give me Jerron Hargrave for this next season and this next season alone. If you were to say, Mitch, who's the better value the next three years? I would say Deron Payne. But Hargrave, going to be 30 years old. Defensive tackle's been a position where we have seen for multiple years that, yes, you can be older and you can still play at a high level over the age of 30. Hargrave's a dog. He's the top defensive tackle in this year's class, and I can't wait to watch him on Super Bowl Sunday. So who's the number one player on the defensive side of the football you want the Raiders to sign? I am going to be making a video about the top five players I want to target. I, I would like to be able to have the amount of money that the Raiders have going into free agency. I just think that so much is about to change in terms of when I am making this video. So stay tuned on that. Subscribe. I promise you, you're not going to want to miss it. So let's roll through these one more time rather quickly. Jeremy, you can just go through as you can. If you don't already know, Jeremy Chuggs and I, we're going to be doing more live shows during the offseason. Anytime breaking news happens, guess what? We're going to be going live here on the Raiders Report. Our show last season when the Raiders traded for Devontae Adams was a one that I don't remember well, but it's also unforgettable. So if you made it this far in the video, let's hope the Raiders hit some home runs this year in free agency. Hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, and enjoy the rest of your day.